Veteran Motorsports Television presents Speed World. This is Mario Andretti, USAC defending national champion, fastest qualifier at Indianapolis, holder of the American record for one mile. Andretti is qualifying for the 100-mile national championship race on the D-shaped oval at Langhorne, Pennsylvania. He's after the coveted pole position, which he has held in all four races so far this season. A new record. Andretti has stopped the clock in 29 and 36 100 seconds. A preview of fast-paced action for Langhorne's 100 miles at speed. everyone and welcome to the glory days. I'm Dave Despain. This week we're going to relive the 1966 USAC Champ Car Race at Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Marked a turning point in the history of IndyCar racing. For years, those high-wheeled roadsters with four-cylinder Offenhausers mounted up front had raced on pavement and dirt for the championship. Well, in the mid-60s, those cars gave way to rear-engine V8s, low-slung, high-tech pavement rockets no longer suited to dirt track racing. After four glorious decades as America's premier dirt track, Langhorne was paved in 1965. And for the 66 running, we join Chris Economaki. Lap times have gone down and speeds up. Thanks to another year of development on the rear engine chassis, new to U.S. tracks, high revving V8 engines, and breakthroughs in tire design and compounding, along with the fact that both driver and mechanic have become more familiar with the new type car, which has changed the picture of national championship racing. Another factor, which is making time stand still, is the arrival on the scene of a fiery new breed of young driver, precocious, brave, and above all, talented to the extent that he can extract maximum potential from his sophisticated machine. In the vanguard of the new breed on the circuit is rookie champion Mario Andretti, who earlier traveled one lap here in 29 and 36 100 seconds to establish not only a Langhorne standard, but a new national record as well of 122.615 miles an hour. But speed is not the only requisite for victory at historic Langhorne, recently converted from a dirt circle into an unsymmetrical one-mile belt of asphalt. The new eccentric shape of the racing route keeps Langhorne unique among American speedways, and many of the old techniques are still required to get around, to use a driver's phrase. We discuss the problems of getting around with some of the top drivers. Roger McCluskey driving the GC Murphy Special Number 8. Roger, the speeds are fantastic. The track record has been broken. It's now the fastest track in the United States. Does this make it tougher to race competitively? Uh, by competitively, you mean side by side, Chris? And, and, yeah, in other yeah. words, to pass somebody and put on a good race from a spectator standpoint. Well, it does make it a little tougher, uh, Chris. I think, although now, uh, you know, in the last few years, we've been coming to this rear engine type machine, and now this year, there are more people that have the cars working uh, closer. In other words, all the cars are clo more closely matched than they were in the past. And it's true, they are running quite a bit faster, but I think as time goes on, as the cars get more closely matched, well, then uh, you'll see more side-by-side -side racing. Of course, the track of this shape here does make it a little difficult because uh, there are about four places on the track where the groove is quite narrow. So, uh, In those places, you can't go alongside of another car and maintain your speed, uh, can if, you? If you're running, we'll say uh, both cars are running about the same speed, one of them will have to back up to try to get a shot at the other one. But we'll say down here past the grandstands, where the groove is quite wide and you can run to a breast, but one of you is going to have to get a little break getting into the corner down here on the end than the other in order to get in front of him. 
National champion, Mario Andretti. Mario, we're a half a second faster on the track this year than last. Is it going to make it tougher out there on the track to pass at these great speeds? Well, I don't think so. The reason why we're going faster is because uh, the equipment is improving, so everything is relative. I think uh, uh, it's been a slight problem here passing before, and uh, it's going to be the same. I don't think it's going to be any better or worse. Where is it best for you to pass here at Langhorn? I think for anyone, uh, the best way, the best to spot to pass is the second turn coming onto the only straightaway we have there. Uh, it's nice if you can set up the men early so you can just take them under acceleration. Joe Leonard, a former national motorcycle racing champion, has made a great entry into the four-wheel sport. Joe, you've had a few seasons of automobile racing. you find it much different than the cycles? Well, yes, Chris. It's uh, quite a bit different than cycles uh, due to the cars being quite a bit heavier and quite a bit more horsepower. With these great speeds that we see here, does it make it difficult to race your fellow competitor? Uh, yes, due to the circumference of the corner um, it's very hard to pass here uh, here uh, it's more or less follow the leader except in a couple of spots and uh, man could be running two or three tenths slower than you and it's very difficult to get around him this is Jim Herdeby he's one of the most colorful drivers ever to appear at the famous Langhorn Speedway and certainly one of the fans favorites Jim, we notice you've got an old roadster here. Do you think it's going to be better for this fast track than one of the rear engine cars? Chris, would you quit calling my roadster an old roadster? Now, this is a <laughs> new fashioned race car. No, I think it'll be as good as any here. I, uh, we had it out for practice, and we're running real, real well. Does it make it more difficult to race another fellow on the, at these speeds? It's easier to pass in certain spots than it is in others. Like, you take a track of long straightaways, now you pass down the straightaways or coming off but here you got to pass in the corner all the time so you pass in one of the easiest spots which is actually i think down the front straightaway here don branson here at langhorn in a dirt track car don it looks different why are you in this kind of a machine well chris actually uh this type of racetrack here uh, i feel like uh, calls for this type of race car because you have to run a little bit out of control and uh, with the rear engine machine, I feel like when I get them sideways, well, I've lost them. But this one, I can keep it under control, even though I do get sideways. When you say out of control, you mean in a drift? Well, yes, with the uh, back end out, so to speak, Chris. Uh, is this car easier to handle uh, in that situation than a rear engine car? Well, I feel like it is, yes, uh, because if you get a little, bit, if you do get the back end out a little bit, you you can make a uh, correction for it and go right on. You very seldom even have to get out of the throttle. It's time to get on the throttle as Chief Steward Harry McQuinn of the United States Auto Club briefs drivers on the rules and general conduct expected of them during the race. An unseasonably cool June day invites over 28,000 racing fans to the Horn Classic. Track temperatures are expected to be well below norm, promising the spectators a fast race and the drivers few overheating problems, if any. Green flag. Mario Andretti in the number one Dean Van Line Special, powered by a four cam Ford V8, commands the pole position by virtue of his sizzling record run. Next to him in the front row is Don Branson in an old but surprisingly fast dirt car. Branson qualified a half second slower than Andretti. Promoter Irv Freed heads the field in the traditional pace lap. The other starters sit like this. In the second row, Gary Congdon, car 54, and Joe Leonard in one of Dan Gurney's new Eagles. Roger McCluskey and Jim Herdebees follow. Herdebees in a trusty front engine offy. Up and coming Gordon Johncock and Al Unser make up the fourth row. Johncock in the Weinberger Homes rear engine Ford and Unser in the same John Meekham Lola that won at Indianapolis with Graham Hill aboard. Behind them, the remaining 16 starters and Jimmy McElroy, 11 places back. The home stretch is in sight and the 100 mile championship race is underway. into the lead, followed by Branson and Congdon, the pack stringing out Indian file. First lap leader, Mario Andretti, chose the way around, stretching his lead confidently. The Langhorn field is an interesting mixture of old and new racing machines. There are 17 of the lightweight rear engine funny cars, faster, more nimble, and yet more delicate than the traditional front engine roasters and dirt cars. 
Nine are powered by Ford engines, seven by the four-cylinder Oppenhauser, and there's a lone Chevy in the field. Two of the five front engine cars are dirt machines. Don Branson's dirt car holds second at the moment, handling beautifully. Mario Andretti, in the car he put on the pole at Indianapolis, has increased his first place margin to eight car lengths over Branson. Gary Congdon holds down third, with Roger McCluskey in fourth. Jim McElreath has moved up quickly from his 11th place starting position, and now lies eighth behind Leonard, Johncock, and Herdebee. pursuit of Herdebees, last year won the first race on Langhorne's newly paved surface. He repeated that victory two months later in the 125 miler. His third place finish in Indianapolis this year gives him a big boost in his campaign to unseat Andretti as national driving champion. McElroy doggedly trails a roadster, waiting for a slip by Herdebees. He's inside on turn four and gets by Herdebees to nail down seven. McElreath is wasting no time in getting to the front. Next objective, sixth place Gordon Johncock, now busy with Joe Leonard. A turn one traffic jam slows McElreath. John Cox swings wide. No incident, and gentleman Jim McElroy gives him room. And it's follow the leader again. Lap times have gone down. McElroy turning the track in 30 seconds flat, better than his qualifying time. Andretti, two seconds up on Branson and really moving. Average speed, 111 miles an hour. Main Street is busy again. McElreath takes the outside route. He's by John Cox and Congdon. With McCluskey falling back, McElreath moves into fourth. Joe Leonard, a car length away, holds third behind Branson. Andretti's still in sight, but increasing his lead to a quarter of a mile. Trouble on turn two. George Snyder and Art Pollard spun coming off the first turn. Both cars ram the guardrail, but no one is hurt. The race is slowed under the yellow flag as maintenance crews clean up the debris and remove the cars from the track. USAC rules dictate that cars must maintain position during caution laps. No car can pass another unless the car ahead is not able to keep pace and the starter gives his approval. While the yellow flag is out and the action interrupted, let's take a moment out from the Langhorn 100-mile national championship race. Back again at Langhorn for 100 miles at speed. Defending national champion Mario Andretti sets the pace in the Clint Broner built rear engine Ford. Don Branson, Joe Leonard, and Jim McElreath follow in order. Gary Congdon coasts into the pits. He owned third place for 20 miles before coming in. McElreath closes in on Joe Leonard and squeezes by on turn one. putting on quite a show, moving up from 11th to 3rd in less than 40 miles. Don Branson, in the dirt job, is his next target and second spot. This car, 54, is out of it. The Valvoline Special looked promising, but gearbox trouble is diagnosed, and the rear engine off is parked for the day. Tough break for young Gary Conger, but he'll be back for many races to come. Andretti's tour looks effortless. He's lapped most of the field and leads Branson by half a lap. The Nazareth Pennsylvania ace is after his second consecutive championship victory and well on his way to his first at the horn. Don Branson is also doing well, holding off McElroy with expert wheelmanship. With added rubber on the track, the groove widens and allows Branson to throw the rear end out and stay on the throttle. Look at McElroy, stay with him. the 
grandstands, McElreath gets the inside track. Branson sweeps wide. McElreath floors him, hugs the line, and takes him. With McElreath now second, closing in on Andretti, this could be a replay of their battle here a year ago. But that's not on Andretti's mind as he breezes by Chuck Hulse. The order now, Andretti, McElroy, Branson. One, two, and three. Joe Leonard's Yamaha Eagle holds fourth. And Jim Herdebees has improved his position with his roadster and lies fifth. Gordon Johncock has pitted and is out of the race. His funny car suffered a broken rear axle U-joint. This moves Al Unser's Lola into contention. Curtis has bolted past Leonard and starts by Branson on the outside and makes it into third now. It's not an antique show you're watching. This is racing. Curtis now has designs on second place. McElreath laps Bob Harkey in turn one. The traffic slows Herdebees a bit, but he stays on the throttle and keeps pace. In 1966, USAC 100 miler in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. It's rear engine technology versus old fashioned roadsters in a battle marked by what commentator Chris Economaki describes as expert wheelmanship. As we rejoin the action, national champion Mario Andretti has a huge lead over the defending race champ Jim McElreath. The roadsters of Jim Herdebees and Don Branson are gamely hanging on. 17 cars are still running. Among the retirements are three Oppies and two Fords all rear-engine machines. The roadsters are gamely hanging on. Herdebees pressing hard to stay with the faster rear-engine racers. Branson in a dirt car has fallen back to sixth, but is still in there. Herdebees loses it. He's up on the infield embankment and into the fence. This brings out the yellow. Jim is out of the car and is all right. The roadster, however, is not. The right rear wheel is broken and the tire flat. A tough break for Jungle Jim Herdebees after a fine showing. With Herdebees off the track, the yellow is a short one. And flagman Nick Panoro sends the boys racing again. Al Unser in Graham Hill's Indianapolis winning car moves into third ahead of Joe Leonard's Eagle. In front of the fans, Andretti pulls away adding two seconds to his lead as the pack thunders through turn one. Trouble. Tailenders Ronnie Duman and Bob Hurt collide. Hurt is into the outside wall. Duman spins, but keeps his engine running. This is the third yellow to show. Neither driver is injured, but Bob Hurt is out of action. Duman, number 96, is trying to rejoin the race. His spin started the incident but Hertz's only contact with him was with his rear tire. The caution flag allows McElroy to close in on Andretti. Last year, in a similar post-accident restart, McElroy out-jumped Andretti to take the lead and held it to the checkered flag. But Andretti's wiser this time. He shows McElroy some exhaust. is unchanged. Andretti, McElroy, Unser, and Leonard. The race nearing the 90 lap mark. Oil on the track. Bobby Unser's rear engine supercharged Oppie slicked up turn four. A broken oil filter, the cause. This presents a serious problem. With speeds in excess of 120 miles an hour, the cars literally float when hitting an oil slick and can easily go out of control before corrective measures can be taken. Al Unser's lost it. He's on the apron, still running, but he's lost quite a few places. The pace has not let up. 
obsession in a front engine roadster streaks down the back stretch. He's in trouble, spins out. This second mishap brings out the yellow flag. Obsession hopes to get restarted before the race ends. The pace car is out, and the action slowed for the fourth time today. McCluskey, dragging a body panel, goes inside the oil slick. With one lap remaining, it's doubtful that we'll have any more racing. With the finish line less than a mile away, Andretti is assured of his first victory at Langhorn. It's a great day for the little Italian from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Andretti established an American record for the mile and led the 22-car field wire to wire for his second consecutive win on the championship trail. His Clint Bronner tune, rear engine, funny car is last year's model, but it performed flawlessly today. Andretti was only pressured when the caution flags allowed the ranks to close, but he had the power and handling to pull away and was never seriously challenged. There it is, another Langhorn Classic in the book. The average speed was slow due to the 30 laps run under caution. Andretti completed the 100 miles in one hour, 47 and 78 100 seconds for an average speed of 98.690 miles per hour. In a moment, victory lane and a word with the winner. After 100 trying miles of big car racing, Mario Andretti all but walked away with the Big D feature. Points earned place Mario third in the season-long race for the national championship, behind leader Jim McElreath of Arlington, Texas, and Gordon Johncock of Hastings, Michigan. McElreath gave Andretti a good run for his money to finish second after starting 11th. Joe Leonard was third, and Don Branson brought his antique dirt car home fourth. Billy Foster was fifth, followed by McCluskey, Parkey, Arnie Knepper, and Unser whose hard luck oil spin, 10 laps short of the finish, put him way back. Let's squeeze into victory lane with the winner. It's a bit crowded, isn't it, Mario? Well, it certainly is, but it's beautiful. But what about the track, Mario? Could they have finished under the green? Well, I don't think so. Uh, well, actually, uh, I think I'm selfish uh, by saying this, but uh, the track was so bad, it oiled up all the way around it. I think uh, it would have made it so dangerous that uh, perhaps it could have probably crashed a couple of cars, and uh, I don't think uh, it's worth it. You uh, showed blazing speed out there. You even lowered your qualifying record. Did you know that? Uh, well, uh, the chief mechanic told me, and uh, I didn't know it at the moment. Do you think you could have held McElroy's had the track been dry? Well, we'll never know, but I think so. Fine. Continue. Good luck to you, Mario Andretti, winner of the Langhorn 100. Mario Andretti continues to prove that his crown is a deserved one. His victory here in his sophomore year in the big leagues and on a track that no one really knows marks him as a genuine champion destined for greatness. Later that year, Mario clinched his second straight USAC championship. He added a third in 69, and he won his fourth IndyCar crown, a remarkable 15 years later in 1985. Versatility earned him the title, world's greatest race driver. He's won on dirt and pavement, on ovals and road courses, in stock cars, sports cars, and Indy cars, and he's the only driver ever to win both the IndyCar and Formula One world championship. Mario Andretti, he certainly lived up to those predictions of greatness, made at Langhorn in the glory days of IndyCar racing. I'm Dave Despain. I'll see you next week.